Welcome to Monty Hall. This is the quantum cryptography talk. If you're in Monty Hall for the quantum cryptography talk, you're in the right place. Otherwise, this is the time to get up and walk somewhere else. Uh, the gentlemen that we have here with us tonight, we have Ilya Gerhard, we have Vadim Makarov. Vadim is with the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Ilya is with Center for Quantum Technologies in Singapore. They're going to talk about quantum cryptography and why it is absolutely something that you want to know about. And here they are. Okay, can you hear me? It's okay. Fine, so today we are going to present you results of uh, recent experimental work which we have done just last month. Can you hear me well? Okay. We, this uh, experimental work done last month is a joint uh, collaboration of uh, two folks, Vadim Makarov and Chin Liu from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim, and Ilya Gerhardt, Antia Lamas Linares, and Christian Kurzifer from the Center for Quantum Technologies, Singapore. My name is Vadim Makarov, and part of the talks will be presented by Ilya Gerhardt. The outline of, of today is a uh, general inter introduction into quantum cryptography. Then, after that, uh, we will uh, present the particular quantum crypto system uh, which we are going to crack. After that, we describe the vulnerability which is going to be used for cracking this quantum crypto system and present a complete, complete description of the attack. After that, Ilya Gerhardt will uh, talk about implications of this attack for other quantum optics experiments. Uh, quantum cryptography, uh, the original idea of quantum cryptography, you can say, uh, uh, originated in the mind of Stefan Wiesner around 1970. He proposed to use money physically impossible uh, to counterfeit by encoding a serial number of the banknote on, uh, on a sequence of spins stored in the banknote. Completely impractical technology, still impossible to implement, but a physically sound idea. He tried to publish it, and of course, the paper was promptly rejected by the journal, so it was never published. But uh, in 1984, uh, Bennett and Brassard, who now about Wiesner's idea, uh, took it in, into a much more practical form. They proposed to do secure communication by encoding uh, secret bits into a sequence of uh, photon polarizations. And now it was instantly much more valuable idea because it was implementable. You can send photons down optical fiber or free space optical channel and you can make this idea work with the current technology. Five years later, uh, they built a proof of the principal experiment, uh, a quantum key distribution system that worked at over 30 centimeters uh, on above an optical table. And from that point on, people believed that it's going to work, and the field started to develop exponentially. The num number of papers increased every year, and I think this process still continues. Uh, very quickly, people built fiber uh, optic trans uh, quantum key transmission links, first over a kilometer, then very quickly over 20 kilometers. It took 15 years for the field to mature for the, to the first commercial quantum crypto systems. The current distance records is 200 kilometers transmission uh, demonstrated on fiber and 144 kilometers in free space. Uh, I think that this year record is actually 250 kilometers. 200 was uh, just two years ago. And to put this talk into perspective, we also plot our, our achievement in this timeline. So, what does quantum cryptography do? What problem it solves? This is uh, a standard... Uh, symmetric cipher uh, encryption scheme widely used everywhere. Uh, 
In this scheme, uh, we have two communicating parties, the sender Alice and receiver Bob. Before Alice and Bob can start communication, Alice distributes to Bob a secret random key through a secure distribution channel. After Alice and Bob both have a copy of this secret key and they are sure that nobody else knows the secret key, they can use uh, classical symmetric ciphers such, such as, for example, AES or DES to encode a message to be transmitted and transmit them, them over an insecure public channel, for example, internet in an encrypted forum. And then the same key is used to decode the message into the original clear text forum. The problem with this scheme is the problem of key distribution. How do, do you distribute the secret key so that nobody eavesdrops? Two methods are used currently today. One method is distribution by couriers used for the most secure communication, like uh, diplomatic channels, spies, and so on. Uh, the other method is public key cryptography, which relies on uh, mathematical assumptions, uh, unproven mathematical assumptions, uh, one-way functions, to distribute secret key from Alice and Bob. Uh, the problem with the first method is that courier distribution is expensive and inconvenient. The problem with public key cryptography is that it's not proven, uh, we don't know if it's secure, it can be broken overnight by a sudden mathematical advance. Uh, if somebody finds how to factorize large integers, your public key cryptography is toast immediately. And actually we know it's, it's in fact broken on a quantum computer, we, we now an efficient factorization algorithm for a quantum computer. So as soon as, as the quantum computer is built, public key cryptography is toast. And here, quantum cryptography comes to the rescue. It proposes to distribute a secret key from Alice to Bob through an open channel by encoding it on a sequence of uh, quantum states, for example, polarization states of photons. This is something which is not possible in the classical world but possible in the quantum world. So this key distribution channel can be open to eavesdropping. Anybody can try to eavesdrop on the sequence of quantum states, but quantum mechanics guarantees that any attempt of eavesdropping will be guaranteedly revealed. So let's see how Alice can distribute to Bob a secret random key over an open channel. Alice prepares a sequence of single photons, preparing each photon in a randomly chosen one of the four polarization states, vertical, horizontal, or two diagonal polarization states. Those two four polarization states are grouped into two bases, vertical, horizontal bases, and diagonal bases, and each of them in each basis is assigned a one and zero bit value, which represent the random key bit values. She sends photons over to Bob. Bob, for each photon that comes to him, he randomly and independently of Alice chooses one of the two detection bases, vertical, horizontal bases, or the diagonal detection bases. Bob detects the photon and records his detection result, as well as the, his basis choice. After Alice sends to Bob a number of photons, for example, a thousand photons, they stop communication and communicate over a classical channel like internet between Alice and Bob. They compare their basis choice, but not the bit value.